Hello there. Texas Deacon here. I love your comments. Please keep sending them. The title of today's lesson is Those Unwanted Christians. Sounds strange, but I'm going to show you some unwanted Christians. I personally don't like to go to nursing homes, care centers, assisted living, old folks home. Call them what you will. That suffering bothers me. It really does. Especially when there's nothing you can do about it. But just give those people a, a good word and pray with them, talk to them. And that's important. But another thing that bothered me equally as much, a large percentage of those people there would not have to be there or should not be there. But the family either doesn't want them around or their house or home is not really set up to handle anybody like this. And I totally understand this. Now, don't get me wrong. Last year, my mother's twin sister had to go to the nursing home. Yes, my mother's still living, praise the Lord. 86 years old. I thought the woman was pretty much, had her days numbered, but she gets to the nursing home and there was a 180 degree turnaround in her life. She loved it. She was with people. Where she, when she was home, was just a daughter, a widowed daughter, and an adopted granddaughter who is a special child. She's 36 years old, just a loving a person you'd ever want to meet. She still goes to school, but they couldn't look after her grandmother. At the nursing home, she was doing good, so. I thank God for nursing home. It's just those people that are marginal. And just this week, the pastor and I took a day of visitation. We went to a nursing home and visited one of the members of our congregation that no longer can attend for health reasons. It was a good day for her. She knew who we were. She does not always know who we are. Also, we went by some other members' home that they haven't been in the church building for a long time because they're just not physically able. They're able to look at each other at home, but to get out and about and drive, no, it's just not, not a good thing for them to do. And then we went to a, another member's home who hadn't been in church for a while. They've had some lingering illness. A day of visitation. Visitation, it's a duty, it's responsibility, it's a privilege, it's an honor, it's part of worship. My concern about those people that no one wants them around, and one of the reasons the excuses they give is that we just don't have the facilities at home to look after them. If our house, we had facilities, they could stay home. And the sad part is that this is true in most cases. Now, when you see what this person is going to need to stay around the house, when I drive through the countryside, I see what I call these million dollar homes. They're everywhere out there. Now, these people build these big homes on acreage. Invariably, they have the mother-in-law house or sometimes there's an attached house to the main house where uh, obviously someone could easily live. But even for uh, people in modest income, the blue collar workers, when you get a new home and they buy them all the time, when you have designed a floor plan, make a bedroom, the master bedroom, a little larger than it has to be, considerably larger, let's say, so if the time comes, you ever have to put a couple of beds in there, those electric uh, mechanical beds, there's room. And another problem too, if you would put these things into the original design, it may not cost any more at all. However, if you had to go in and redesign the inside of an existing house, and tear out walls and rebuild bathrooms, it would be totally out of uh, 
financial reach of most people. And another thing, I measured the doorways in my own house where I live. Doorways serve one purpose, for a human body to pass through. The doors in my house measure 20, 23, 24, 31, 32, 35, 39. That many varying widths of doors in my house alone. Now you can easily see if they were all 42 inches wide, it'd be easy. Uh, you'd get a wheelchair through and also to the bathroom. The bathroom needs a walk-in shower or a roll-in shower. A, mo a motorized chair, for example, you couldn't put that in the shower. And we see these motorized chairs on TV pushing them. How with the government help and with insurance you can get it almost free or sometimes free even. Well, you see these people rolling around inside their house so easy and everything, but you never see them going in and out. Most houses are slab now, slab form house. And as you come up to the sidewalk, there's always that little step up about that much. Why does it have to be there? I'm not saying lower the slab. I'm saying let's slope the sidewalk, an inclined plane, to where it meets the house at the floor level and you could roll right in, nothing stopping you. And the large bedroom, is that gonna be a problem? No, not really. I have never in my life heard anyone say, this, honey, this rooms in this house are just too big. We should have built smaller rooms. I've heard a lot of times, Honey, the rooms in this house are just too small. We should have built them bigger. You can live with the bigger ones. And uh, so you have, so you might need two, two master bedrooms in the house. You can live with two master bedrooms. And don't rule out the possibility that's gonna be your room. You could be forced to live in there someday and not be able to, to get up and leave the house when you want to. Now, we're going to read the fifth commandment, which we have gone over many times before. Exodus 20, 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. It says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long. God is telling you, you treat them right, you're going to live longer. God said it. I believe it. Now, if you're going to live longer, he's not going to put you in a worse life. I believe that he's going to give you a better and a longer life just for looking after your mother and your father. And by the way, that also covers grandmother, grandfather. How about aunt and uncle? How about a friend that that uh, you can take in? You can make brownie points with God, you know that? By doing things like this, doing it from the heart. We can never impress God with anything we do. A God that spoke the universe into existence, but we can please him and look at after those people around you that need help within your means, of course, you help them and that would be pleasing unto God. And also too, these old people, they have a lifetime of love, wisdom, learning, experiences, knowledge. Put them on camera every chance you get, record what they have to say how would you like for someone to come up to you and say, hey, listen, i got all these videos of your great-great-grandfather 125 years ago. Would you like to see it? Oh, of course you would. Do it for, for somebody that's going to live 125 years from now. The world may be standing. I don't know. That's God's decision. I don't even get involved in that area. 
you'll be a better person for it. The old people will appreciate it and God will love you even the more if that's possible. Thank you. May God bless America. May God bless the Republic of Texas. And may God bless you and yours.